Bushido is the world's toughest form of hand-to-hand -hand combat. It pulls in the world's biggest live audiences for any form of wrestling. Few bouts go the distance. This wrestling is for real. Competitors give and take ferocious blows to the head and body. It combines the best of judo and karate, sambo and kickboxing. Never before have fighters in these different disciplines challenged one another in the same ring. The UWFI, the sports governing body, has strict rules and regulations. You're allowed to use your forearm, but you must not use the point of your elbow. You can slap, but you cannot bite, scratch, or headbutt. Headbutting is illegal. When your opponent is on all fours, you cannot kick to the head. But as soon as one arm is up in defense, a kick to the head is allowed. When your opponent is on all fours, the rest of the body is a legitimate target. If a foul is committed, then points are deducted. Four points are conceded when a suplex throw results in a referee's count. Three points are lost for any knockdown, and one point is deducted for a suplex throw. Fighters can escape any submission hole by touching the rope, but they then concede a point. A submission at any time ends the fight. This is Tokyo, and this is the Budokan, the martial arts' most famous stadium. The crowds are flocking in to see the fastest growing spectator sport in Japan. signal the start of the evening let's go inside and sample the atmosphere Crackling night of entertainment ahead, topping the bill, Yoji Anjo against Naoki Sano. Miyato takes on Denis Kozlowski. And first up, a kickboxing contest, Bowie Chawaikong against Tony Coburn. Tony Coburn, the 24-year-old from Australia, makes his debut here. The WKA Australian champion, he's now going to try his skill in Japan.
Bowie Chawaikong from Thailand. Over a hundred professional fights back home. This is only his second outing here. Last time out, he beat Canadian Mel Murray with a stoppage. Commentators are former World Karate Champion Jeff Thompson and our technical expert is Ted Pell. Well, the UWF International has given Bowie Choi Kun another tough test tonight. Last time we saw him go up against um, Mel Murray, the WKA Canadian welterweight champion. And tonight he's going up against Tony Coburn, who's the WKA uh, Australian champion. And this should prove to be a real great fight. It should be. Um, Choi Kung actually developing quite a reputation now in UWFI. Excellent credentials in his kickboxing. Um, he has about a, approximately 100 pro fights in Muay Thai. Those were in Thailand. This is his third fight with the UWF International. Chao Wai Kung come fighting out of the red corner. Cockburn fighting out of the blue corner. Chao Wai Kung in the maroon shorts. Cockburn in the black shorts. And it looks like Bowie's sticking with his typical strategy that we've seen before. He's not really exerting much effort in this first round. He seem, seems like he's testing out Coburn right now. Be very interesting. I mean, this bout scheduled for five rounds, three minutes. And yes, um, Bowie actually taking his time. He's now pretty renowned for stalking and getting a good strategy, feeling his opponent, and then going to work. Yeah, but when you see, he, like, he just exploded with that left middle kick, you see the power behind that kick. It's his eyes that amaze me. I mean, he's so focused. And you notice he's not really fighting back, but he's not getting pushed back either. He's, he's standing his ground, and he seems to be taking... I'd say maybe he's taking control of the ring right now. He's trying to work those knees right. Yes, I mean, ring strategy and actually dominating certain aspects of the ring is key when you want to take advantage of your opponent, whether you're attacking or defending. And that, I mean, that's certainly being employed here by Chao Wai Kung. What's really impressed me about Bowie and uh, watching his past fights, even though when he's testing out his opponent and he's not throwing anything, and even when he's not fighting back, he's taking control of the ring, which is pretty amazing. But Tony Cockburn may giving a good account of himself in the early stages of this fight. He's not intimidated by um, Bui Charakang. No, he certainly isn't. He's holding his own and he's doing pretty good. He's trying to throw knees, but Bui's pretty good at the defense against knees. Referee Wada showing his flexibility there. Tony Coburn, uh, another fighter who's known for his punches rather than his kicks. Seems to be the... Um, one advantage, if there is any, against an opponent like Bui Chao Wai Kung, that most of the WKA um, full contact fighters bring into the ring. They do have very good punching ability. Excellent punching skill. And like we know, Mel Murray, who Bui fought last time, he was also a professional boxer as well as a kickboxer. So they have excellent punching skills. And that seems to be the case in, with many Western fighters, as opposed to the, their Asian counterparts, who are better with their legs. But a good, nice combination there by Cockburn. He's Seems to be wanting to feel out Bowie now and saying, look, let's see what you can take. And we see Tony Coburn's excellent punching ability. Let's you see the speed and power behind those punches. Let's come to the end of round one. Both fighters going back to their respective corners. And Bowie Chao Wai Kung actually in front by one point. He's leading by one point. There's a one point gap right now, but that could change really quickly. Coburn's really impressed me with his punching ability. You saw the speed and the power behind those punches. But Bowie seemed to be okay. He was he was weathering it pretty good. Cockburn, uh, Australian welterweight champion, um, which would suggest he doesn't have much experience, but he certainly seems undaunted by the task here. Well, looking at the first round, it seems like he, he has a good idea of what he's doing and what he should be doing. We'll have to see in the second and third rounds when Bowie decides to explode on him. That's right. But I think, I think basically both fighters wanted to test each other out and check what kind of artillery each other had. Tony Coburn didn't look like he was exactly exerting himself that much either. He, it looks like he was testing out Bowie and trying to see what kind of weapons he has. He's very, both, both fighters very cautious at this point. They're not willing to rush in and fight. 
As we see another close up there, the concentration by Bui Chao Wai Kung. And as we saw him come to the center of the um, ring for round two, he seemed to dominate that all important area, the center of the ring. So he's got control. And it looks like we have the classic case of the puncher versus the kicker in this fight. Yes, have to agree with that. As we see there, a nice low kick to Coburn's midsection. But Coburn replying with a nice combination. And he's, he tried to set up some knees with those punches, but Bowie saw it coming. And Bowie's throwing some knees of his own, and he's doing pretty well. And he's trying to work the midsection. He's trying to drive that knee into the solar plexus right now. Tying up Kamai Chung. Instructions coming from both cornermen, applauding that nice low kick to the thigh of Coburn. And Coburn better be careful. He better not um, sway under too much, otherwise he'll be in danger of getting knee to the head. Yes, but that knee is looking quite effective. And yet again, Bui Chawai Kung does this in every fight. Once there's a clinch and there's a kneeing exchange, he normally throws his opponent. Referee Wada not choosing to warn or penalize in that exchange. One thing Bowie might be possibly open for right now is for the, um, a straight uppercut. But he's working his own knees and he seems... It's slowly starting to penetrate through, but Coburn's fighting back with his, uh, his own knees. And we're seeing a difference of the, of the classic Eastern style and Western style, but yet again, more, more like UWFI wrestling. <laughs> but back to business. Seeing a red <laughs> round. <laughs> Final minute in the second round. But just going back to the point of seeing a, what appears to be a black eye around Tony Coburn's um, left eye. I'm sure that's not been caused by um, Bui Chao Wai Kung. No, it doesn't. I'm not exactly sure, but... One thing I can say is, in the clinches, it seems that Bowie definitely has the upper hand and advantage, and I think Coburn should try to break it off and fight from an outward stance. He shouldn't be clinching with him. He's losing on those exchanges. Coburn looking a little bit tired. Referee Wada getting a knee of his own there to separate the fighters. I think, Bowie, uh, I think Bowie should try to work in the clinches and work with his low kicks. As for Co Coburn, he should be moving back and throwing those punches. He's, he showed some great devastating punches, and I think he has a good chance to win this with his excellent punching technique. Receiving a warning there from Referee Wada. And looking a bit tired as we come to the end of the second round, but... As we come to the end of the second round, Bui Chao Wai Kung yet again look, seems to have had the effect of that groin strike from Coburn. And the knees have taken another point away from Coburn. As we see in the slow mo, he throws excellent kicks. And once again, Bui has another point lead, so we're down to 40 to 38. Coburn getting much need Vaseline around the eyes, as I said earlier. An eye that looked damaged, possibly in training prior to this bout. Now a look at Boi Chaiwa Kung, a very focused and very clinical finisher when he wants to be, or and, chooses to be. And he looks pretty purposeful tonight, uh, once again, as we've seen before. He looks like he has a good game plan, and he looks like he's going to stick with it. He looks very confident, and he's, he doesn't look too anxious to just jump in there and try to tear... Coburn's head off right now. However, as soon as he sees an opening, I'm sure he'll take it. Well, as both fighters square off for round three, Bui Chao Wai Kung normally explodes at the middle stages of the fight. The trunks are rolled up. You can see he's opening up with some pretty ferocious kicks, Ted. Yeah, and you notice Tony Coburn is scared to go inside because of the knees, so he's doing something pretty intelligent. Nice slip, no points deducted. He's trying to set up a punch with some low kicks to get inside. I think he's going to have to do something. Bui Chao Wai Kung looking very menacing. Beautiful low kicks and... Oh! Shin right to the face. And he knows. Bui Chao Wai Kung knows it's connected. He's already celebrating. Coburn taking the count from Reffin His nose is bleeding. He looks out of it. No, he's not going to get up. That's it. Yes, look at this. Bui Chao Wai Kung. That kick looked a little low on the inside of the yeah, thigh. He brought his hand down. Boom, the shin right across the nose. No way back. 
Yeah, and he found that opening and he took advantage of it. That's how quick it was to put the end of the match. But there was good game plan by Tony Coburn, but as I've said, this fighter looks formidable. He's focused, he's fit, and he knows what he wants. And he showed excellent punching ability in this fight tonight. It could have gone either way, but once again, Bowie takes it, and he's ready for the next step. And takes his bow, progressing firmly ever forward to UWFI. Next up, Yuko Miyato takes on Dennis Kozlowski. Yuko Miyato from Kanagawa is 30. He's a veteran. He comes into the bite on the back of two welcome victories. And he's particularly well known for his spin kicks. Dennis Kozlowski from the USA, 33 years old, but he's a new boy on the circuit, still learning the UWFI ropes, yet to win in four fights. Last time out, he lost to Yamazaki, but tonight he has a big weight advantage. Interesting pairing as Kozlowski fights out of the red corner and Miyato out of the blue corner. Miyato seeming more confident now. He's got a few wins under his belt. Kozlowski still looking to find his first win. Yeah, the great wrestler Dennis Kozlowski is, and he's still looking for that first win, which shows you the difference between amateur wrestling and professional wrestling. You see his nice, beautiful single arm drag, but Miyato came out with this bout with some excellent kicks, very powerful kicks, and I think that's the key to him being victorious. As for Dennis Kozlowski, I think he has a lot more experience and a big um, size and weight advantage over Miyato. But as we know, Miyato can handle the weight, good technical ability, good all-round fighting ability, but being dumped on the floor there by Dennis Kozlowski. And Dennis Kozlowski trying to set up an arm lock right now. He's been studying a lot of submissions since he's um, been with the UWF International, and that's one thing Miyato's going to have to be careful of. Miyato has his kicks and submissions. I'd have to say that Miyato has a lot more experience in submission wrestling than Dennis Kozlowski, so maybe he might not be wanting to match submission with Miyato. He'd be just wanting to match with suplexes and ground wrestling. Both fighters starting with 15 points. One trouble is that Dennis Kozlowski doesn't seem to have um, too many offensive techniques, being um, an amateur style wrestler, and you need to have a strike or a submission to put somebody away. Just wrestling on the ground isn't gonna win the match for you. But he's done pretty well, he's adapting, only four fights. 
but giving a good account of himself. One thing you might be worried about is he injured his arm, his, his right arm, in a previous bout, and I don't know. I don't think it, I don't think it'll. It's too bad, or it'll affect him in the match. But heavily strapped, and if he's concentrating with a good mental focus, it doesn't hurt until after the fight. <laughs> Referee Wilder going straight in there. I'm not sure if that strike was legal. So we see there. Ted. Well, he he tried to hit him. It kind of. Slid off his head, Miyato. I think Miyato will be all right. Denis Kozlowski leading by 15 points to 13. Oh. Nice takeover, and he set it up with a knee too. So he is, he is doing some, some of his homework as far as the striking techniques. But I don't think he's going to want to stand toe to toe with Miyato and try to trade hits. I'd be wary of standing toe to toe to Miyato. Someone you've got to be wary of, and treat him with the respect his size demands. If I were Dennis, I'd like to stay on the ground. I'd feel much more comfortable on the ground. I wouldn't want to be standing up fighting against Miyato. Well, Kozlowski made it to the ropes. 14 to 13. Miyato pulls a point back. One thing, he's going to have to worry about the spinning back kick because um, Dennis Kozlowski's style is stance. He's open for the low kick and the spinning back kick. And you see him taking it there. Miyato going for single leg Boston Crab right now. And Dennis Kozlowski is pretty good at defending the wrestling techniques, but like we said before, his stance is open to the kick. Well, he looks to be going for a submission there. Shoot sign being offered by referee Wada to Kozlowski, but no response as yet. But this looks interesting. He's trying to go for the shoulder straight arm bar, but using his legs instead. Dennis saw that coming, and he's trying to quickly reverse an arm lock on Miyato, but Miyato in no immediate danger right now. But he, he oh. could be getting something right now. He's trying to go for a leg split. <laughs> that looks like one of the stretching techniques I would have doing the training. And I'll tell you, that isn't the way you do it. Both arms reach for the ropes there. Miyato definitely in trouble. Hey. Referee Wilder not happy at that, as we saw there. You see the leg split, and it looked like more than leverage. Dennis Kozlowski was using pure strength on that one. <laughs> Ooh. And Miyato's not happy. He wasn't happy with that little exchange or blow after the break. Miyato is trying to set up a suplex, but he can't find it yet. Ooh, sleeper hole. Yes, Miyato's not a happy man. This could be it. Shoot sign, I don't think he's even going to figure here. This could be a, an amazing victory for Miyato if he gets him. He's right in the middle of the ring, and he has a good sleeper hold on Kozlowski right now. There's the close-up. Look at the intense concentration. Miyato, ooh. Dennis Kozlowski made it to the ropes. He, he looks uncomfortable. 13 points to 12. Kozlowski leads. Now he better be careful. Ooh. He's got a kick in. Dennis Kozlowski loses his balance. He almost falls out of the ring. and. Now the, the lead switches over. I'm not sure what the first kick was from Miyato, but he certainly followed through there. Referee Wada having to step in. And now the lead changes from 12 to 10 in Miyato's favor. Kozlowski came with what would <laughs> someone would call a judo on Makikomi, and he's trying to set up an arm lock right now. It's a good bout. Both seeming evenly, evenly matched, but Miyato having a slight advantage with his strikes and kicks. And I'm surprised Miyato's trying to engage in wrestling with Kozlowski, who's much bigger and stronger than him. I hope he doesn't perform that stretch. Oh. It looked as though he was, because both arms yet again went out to the ropes. Miyato making the ropes, one point in it. 11 to 10, Miyato leads. Kozlowski is pretty good at the reversals too. You notice Miyato is going for a cross lock arm bar and he just bridged over that. Once again, he's going for a shoulder arm bar. And you see how he rolled out of that and set up those belly to belly, the belly to belly suplex. He's going to go for it again. That's 10 points each, but I'm not sure what's going to happen here. And he's a little bit shaken up right now. Kozlowski builds up a lead now. Lead seesaw. 10 to 6. Kozlowski leading. Miyato looks stunned. The crowd sense it. Kozlowski looks to be going in for the kill. Well, Kozlowski senses it. He knows it's his opening. If he's going to... He's got the cross lock on the arm. That's it. Well, there we go. Yes, and he's a happy man. He records his first win in UWF. Oh, a good scout from Miyato, as we see there. 
It wasn't much time taken for the point submission. When Kozlowski saw that opening, he really took it quickly, and he used that strength and weight advantage on breaking that grip of Miatos to pull the arm out and extend it into that cross-block arm bar. Well, good bout. Kozlowski was threatening to gain his first scalp, and he does. The winner, the very exciting bout, Dennis Kozlowski. Miato, I'm sure he'll be back. Good fighter, good ability. Now the main event of the night, Yoji Anjo against Naoki Sano. Today is the first time you're going up against Naoki Sano. How, what do you feel about him? Well, when it comes to wrestling, he is really a typical orthodox type of wrestler who really doesn't come out and explode on you and attack you. He likes to take you down on the ground and look for an opening before he puts you away. So in, that's why I'm, I'm not looking for too many surprises. I don't think anything, there'll be too many surprises. Do you have any plans? Well, like I said before, he's really an orthodox type of wrestler, so I'll just have to play along with it. Do you think your kicks will be any kind of determining factor? Nah, I, I really don't know. Do you have a message for the fans? Yes, I'm gonna win it tonight. How do you feel about Yoji Anjo? Well, in the UWF International, he's one of the top fighters, and he has great speed and technique, he has a lot of experience, and he's great on the ground and standing up, so it's going to be really tough. Are you thinking, do you have any plans? have too much, I'm not thinking too much about strategies or anything, just looking out for strikes and submissions. What do you plan for Anjo's kicks, and what do you plan to do in the ring tonight about it? Well, I'm going to have to be worried about blocking his kicks and making an opening for myself, not just blocking him, and the important thing is to be able to do what I do in training up in there. Yoji Anjo from Saitama's 26 years of age. A reputation as a solid all-round fighter, but he's lost his last three contests. The latest defeat at the hands of Yamazaki. Naoki Sano from Hokkaido, very well respected by the crowd, but another man who needs to start winning again. Just one win in four outings, 
Last time out, he suffered a crushing defeat by big bad Gary Albright. Interesting pairing here, Ted. And Joe, known for his superior, I would say, striking techniques. Sano, good wrestling background. Well, I think everybody's really excited for this one. This is the first time we see Yoji Anjo go up against Naoki Sano. Both great at kicking. I'd have to say that probably the kicking, as, as far as kicks and strikes, Anjo would have the advantage. But like um, Anjo said in the pre-fight interview, the Sano is an orthodox type of wrestler who likes to make an opening. Oh, beautiful setup of kicks by Anjo. As I said, I think Anjo has the superior. But not, Sano has to get him down on the ground. Which he's just attempted to do. Sano in the gray trunks. Anjo in his leopard skin tights. And this match is hotting up. And we're not even into the opening minute yet. Well, they're really exploding over each other. They're not exactly waiting for an opening. Sano normally a little bit more cautious warms into the fight but i don't think he's been given the chance here and joe looks very purposeful and those kicks were quite devastating i don't know but they've been really exploding on each other since the opening bell they're not giving me a chance to talk or explain or give any background information right now we see yoji Anjo trying to shoot for a chicken wing face lock but sano reversing it and joe using the ropes to bounce himself back into the center of the ring so he wasn't going for sanctuary in any way, shape, or form. Nice reversal. I'm trying to go for the reverse Achilles tendon hold. You see how Sano just spun out of it. And the posturing. The crowd loving the posturing. And Anjo seems to be applauding. Anjo's applauding Sano. He didn't expect him to be so good on the ground. This is a great bout. It promises to be an exciting exchange. Sano's strategy is going to probably be trying to get Anjo down to the ground and look for an opening for a submission. As for Anjo, I think he has a pretty good chance of knocking Sano out with one of those devastating heel of the hand strikes or kicks or knees. Shoot sign for Sano. But he doesn't seem to be in any trouble. Both fights are starting at 15 points, but somehow I just don't see points being a factor in this bout. <laughs> no, not really. I think I don't think this is going to go the distance. It can't go the distance, a fight like this. Beautiful low kick, and Sano wasn't ready for that. That shook him. I mean, even his head jerked back then. I thought he'd actually taken a head shot. Anjo is so quick with those kicks and knees. You almost have no time to lift your leg to block him. Shoot sign again for Sano. Motioning with his hand that he's okay. Doesn't look okay to me. Then again, I'm not in the center of the ring with Anjo. Anjo's trying to set up for that face lock. He doesn't have the exact leverage he wants, but he's trying to pull him up and apply leverage. Sano doesn't look like he's in immediate danger. A lot of action in the early uh -oh. stages of this bout. No points conceded yet. Ankle lock by Sano. Looked like Anjo was trying to set up for a leg split, but he's reversed it with a leg cross lock. Abby looks in trouble. Offered the shoot sign, but... I'm not sure their referee wider getting entangled. Asking him to break. Be interested to see who actually made for the ropes then. That was a pretty good leg lock by um, Anjo, and it looks like Sano had to escape to the ropes. Once again, they're in the standing up position, and I'd have to say that Sano's in danger, but take nothing away from Sano. He's a pretty good striker himself. I think he can, ooh, ooh nice scissor takedown. Nice scissor takedown. He's setting up for the cross lock on the leg. Cross lock on the knee right now. Shoot sign. Asano. But you notice Sano defended against that cross lock on the knee pretty well. He bent his leg right away and now he's trying to set up his own submission. And I, I'd have to say right now it's Sano's game. But then again, Anjo is certainly no stranger when it comes to submission holds in wrestling. So it could anything could happen in this fight. And probably will. And it's Anjo getting the shoot sign from referee Wada. Leg lock on Anjo. Both excellent wrestlers. I'd say they're very equally matched, and it could go either way. I'd say evenly matched in wrestling ability, but I'd still say Andrew's got the advantage for me in his ability to kick and strike. Definitely. With very, very combined force. And I think that might be um, what determines Anjo's victory tonight. 
Well, let's not speak too soon. As I say, Sano finding his feet in UWFI and giving a very good account. This crowd really appreciating both fighters showing this early commitment at such an early stage in the fight. I don't know how, how long they can keep up at this pace, though. It's going to be my next point, Ted. I mean, they've gone at it almost as though they're sprinters out of the blocks. As we know, you can't sprint for an endurance race. You see Sano, he, he blocked that low kick and he tried to pick it up, which could be dangerous because he could leave his head open for a strike, but he's all right and he's going for his leg lock right now. And But Ancho's quick to reversing it and he might be looking for a cross lock on the... No, he, he dropped a knee on Ancho. Ancho dropped a knee on Sano and well, he's going for a heel hold. There was a double shoot sign offered there by referee Wada, but I think... No, nothing on him now. Nobody in immediate danger right now, but center of the ring. I guess this is where Anjo probably is the most worried. As he said in the pre-fight interview, Sano is a typical orthodox type of fighter who has, who likes to get his opponent down on the mat and look for an opening for a submission. Well, he's getting his forearm down on Anjo's face there as we see Anjo grimacing with pain. He's trying to distract him. He's trying to get it. Anjo has a pretty good grip on his arms, which is making it hard to apply an arm lock. He's trying to dig that forearm into the face and make Ancho let go of that grip to make an opening. This crowd shouting encouragement. I'm not sure for who. Shoot sign for Anjo. Oh, Anjo. Oh, oh. Oh, and that. Riffy Wilder actually stopped that second stomp. Well, they were a little bit close in the ropes. That was, that's that's a judgment call whether that was legal or not. Referee Wilder just stopped it and is giving Ancho a warning. And they've, they've taken a point away from Ancho. Well, the first point taken away is a penalty point. As we see here, he almost used the ropes yeah. for the leverage. Yeah, he, he, was, yeah, he was holding the ropes. I, I, I said it was a judgment call, but he was holding the ropes. Oh, I caught by Sano. Nice takeover. Sano trying to make an opening for himself, and he looks like he found one. He has a body scissors around the body, preventing Anjo from escaping to the ropes. And sleeper over. Look, Anjo reverses an ankle lock. He's he's working on Sano's ankles. You see how quickly they counter and reverse these submission holds. Oh, look at this. This is some great wrestling. Uh oh, he's going for. A reverse sleeper hold. And you can see he's just trying to get the leverage. Oh, knee to the head from Sano to Anjo. And Anjo's waiting for him to pick his hands up. Oh, he missed with that one. He was waiting for Sano to get up. It would have been illegal to kick him to the head in that position, and he was waiting for his hands to come up. Sano knew that, so he didn't pick his hands up. Well, at least showing some discipline and, and knowledge of the rules. Anjo there. The orthodox wrestler Sano just calmly awaiting for that opening, looking for that opening, and when he finds it, he's going to explode all over Yoji Anjo. And he's going for the sleeper hold, but once again, it looks like Anjo's going to be able to reverse it. One, oh, double arm Boom. suplex from the front, and he really spun him right over. Yes, Anjo looks in trouble. It seems to have twisted his neck as he threw him there. Boston Crab. It's, it's incomplete, but he's still causing a lot of damage to the ankles. If he could just sit back on it a little more. Yes, yes, he's doing it. Cool. But they're too close to the ropes. Referee Wilder looked for the shoot sign, but Anjo looked for those ropes. Both fighters, as we said, they put a lot of, their, lot of energy in, looking a little bit tired now. Yeah, but uh, I think that, that last Boston crack took a lot out of Anjo. He looks a little tired. He's going for the arm drag. He's got a cross lock on the knee, which looks incomplete right now, but if you could just pull it up or change it into a heel hold. Sano growling as he grimaces with pain. Referee Wada separates them. Sano makes it to the ropes. 14 to 13. Sano leads. But Anjo better not get overconfident in the standing up position and just write Sano off. As we've seen, although Yoji Anjo probably has the advantage for striking. Ooh, nice suplex. 
We've seen Sano kick and strike before. He's certainly no stranger to strikes either. And if he sees the opening, he's going to take it. When Asano builds up a two-point lead, 14 to 12, the shoot sign is also being offered to Anjo by referee Wada. And it could be a slight turning point. As I said, the fighters were showing some element of fatigue. But Sano seems to be the one that's taking the upper hand here, Ted. Well, this is... I don't know. He's still looking for that one opening. And Anjo, Anjo's doing a pretty good job at countering him so far. And, well, I think it's whoever makes more mistakes is going to lose the bout tonight. They're to very equally matched. You have to agree, but once you're tired, that's when the mistakes creep in. The technique starts to flounder. And the advantages are capitalized on. Front face lock by Sano. Referee Wilder offering the shoot sign to Anjo. And as... Ooh, nice shoulder armbar. He's going in for it with his legs, but once again, it's reversed. Some of these techniques are quite incredible. They tend to flow from one submission opportunity to another. Oh, definitely. And like Anjo said, Sano being the orthodox wrestler, we really haven't seen too many surprises out of him tonight. He's still just sticking along with it. He's just trying to survive long enough till he finds that one opening that he can explode all over him. But so far, Anjo really hasn't given too many openings, which is making it very tough for him. You see him with a front face lock right now. This is Anjo growls defiance to referee Wada's offer of a shoot sign. Sano focusing on his work. I'm not sure if that's a response from the crowd to what's happening in the ring. But I can tell you, the action's hot. Reversal. But again, the shoot side being offered for... It's against Sano. They're Sano asking there. Sano if he's ready to submit. <laughs> Seeming to have trouble with his throat there as he clears his throat. Rather than the box, clear to the throat. The only trouble is they're sweating so much that Ancho's having trouble getting a grip on him. He has a good front face, he, he has a good face lock on him right now, but Sano manages to back up and he ropes. And Sano better be careful right now because I think Anjo is ready to throw some kicks from the stand. Yeah, he looks like he's looking at him. Well, they're both tired. It's a close match. 13 to 12, Sano leads. I think Anjo's got to try and use his kicks now to try and build a, a gap or gain some advantage. Going for the heel hold right now, but a little bit too close to the ropes and Murphy Water breaks him. And I don't think Sano wants to be in the standing up position right now, and I think Anjo does. Yes, there's a predicted. Oh, I think Anjo is trying that double. That Ooh. flying knee strike. Oh, what an amazing response. Oh, beautiful knee. Sano in trouble. He's stunned. Stunned on trunks. Takes the count. Oh. Like I said, Sano doesn't want to be standing up at this point. They're too tired. It's gone too far. And they're losing stamina on there. He just makes the count. And as you see here, Anjo going to work with that knee and dropping him. Sano, the lead 12 to 10, swinging back into Anjo's favor, but here we see Sano, what an action pack that is. Anjo going for the kill, but you notice Sano caught his kick and he's going for the reverse Achilles tender hold. Anjo's in trouble. Oh, this is interesting, the crowd sends it, the free water senses it, but does Anjo sense it? Sano going for the STF right now, and Anjo's in trouble, he's in bad position. STF step over foothold. Yes. I got it, I actually remember. And he's got the face lock too. He's working on that ankle, he's working on the knee, and he's going for the face lock, the sleeper hold at the same time. And Anjo's in bad trouble. Unless he's a contusionist, I can't see him getting out, but no. Seems so sorry, he's giving him away out. He went for the face lock, he was giving up on the leg, which wasn't, wasn't exactly smart. He um, actually allowed Anjo to escape to the ropes. 11 to 10, Anjo with a slender lead, and I think Sano actually let Anjo off the hook there. Oh, or did he? He could well pay for that mistake. Anjo with renewed energy. Bad mistake by Ooh. Sano. And I think Anjo's going to take advantage of that mistake. It's those sort of mistakes which determine who's going to be victorious. And here we go. Ooh. Well, that was close. The crowd note was close, Referee Wilder steps in, both fighters struggling on their feet. There's, the there's a cross lock on the arm. 
Sano made it to the ropes. One point separates these two fighters. Front kick to the front section. Going for the leg lock. I guess, I guess in that earlier STF exchange by Sano, he felt he wasn't getting the exact leverage that he wanted, so he thought it would be much easier to just go for the face lock. That was that was more desperation and relief as Sano found those ropes. This score is just seesawing at the moment. 11 to 8, I make it. In Anjo's favor. Oh, Anjo went, went for a turnover. He's trying to go for the cross lock on the knee, but Sano tried to block it with his right foot, but he's actually in trouble as Anjo's going out shooting after his ankles. And Sano shot for the ropes, 11 to 7. Anjo beginning to build up a lead and create a gap. Both of these fighters realize that ankles and elbows and wrists are the vulnerable points. Oh, belly to back, beautiful. Every time I see that, this very bad neck of mine feels a twinge. One, two, but look at this, this is points at level three, seven, seven. Four, five, Anjo takes the count. Anjo's six, in trouble right now. Seven, I'm sure he really didn't eight, expect that one. He said he wasn't expecting too many surprises, but this proves him wrong. Look at that German suplex. Wow, I would not want one of those. Great stuff, but Anjo actually strikes with nice. Catches Sano's leg. Beautiful technique. You notice he caught Sano's kick, rolled, curled his leg over on top of him, and from the standing position, brought him down to the ground with an SDF hold. Excellent. Shoots on being offered to Sano. His head slips out of that hold. Both been on their feet. A little bit too close to the ropes. Referee Wada. Step straight in there. Andre loses his point for a step into the ropes. It looked like he had a pretty good STF on him, but he kind of slipped out and Sano had a good um, face lock. Now Andre going for the front face lock. Seven to six. This is close. Standing double wrist lock, and he takes Andre over. Better. Oh, uh oh. He has the arm lock with a headlock. Both grunting not only in pain but in exhaustion. Uh oh. Chicken wing face lock. Sano's going for the chicken wing. This has to be it. The yes. Yeah, they're in the middle of the ring. That's it. Whoa. Look at this. Well maneuvered. Great end to a brilliant match. Well, he found that opening in the middle of the ring and he took it. Beautiful chicken wing. Yes, the top set it. Did you, did you see how quick that submission was? Boy, he slipped that chicken wing in. Like about a split second, and your winner, Naoki Sano. And a deserved one. This is a great bout, and a well-earned victory. Victory number two for Sano. Could we see him emerging up this ladder now? Well, definitely, but take nothing away from Anjo. He fought a great fight. It could have gone up either way, and in the rematch, he might just take it. And all of Anjo's matches always proved to be exciting, but... Tonight, Sano had the upper advantage, and he found that opening, and he took it. Well, he was much more quicker than I expected him to be. I thought you'd be standing up a lot more with him, but, but you tried to do a lot more groundwork. Well, I really don't remember what on. I was kind of excited at the time.